Leah, how are you all doing? I pray that you're doing blessed and well. In this video, what I want to talk about is the God that loves to break you. And many people will think this is not biblical because of scriptures like where God says He knows He has the plans for us and not plans of evil, but plans of good, etc, etc. And I'm paraphrasing. However, it is very biblical. When you look at all God's people, God broke them. God took away their own desires. God took away their own dreams. And He crushed them. He crushed them in their lives. He crushed them in their own desires. Um, and He changed their hearts. <clears throat> the Bible says God will not despise a broken and a contrite heart. If we go through the history, you see, many people, they never suffer any kind of heartache or major obstacles in their life. Everything runs smoothly for them. But at the end of the day, you look at those people and you often find those people are very shallow, very superficial, and very far from God. Some of them might even be believers in the Messiah, but spiritually they are so far from God, or from the Most High, their prayer life isn't where it should be. They, they're not in touch with themselves. And I'm not saying everyone that, ha that does get broken in their lives turn to God. Some turn better and turn far away from Him. I mean, I've seen people like that and they, and they just so far from the Most High. Even people that I'm close to, um, even people that I know personally, um, they've gone through hardships, but they don't have a relationship with the Most High. They don't. They even struggle to pray, they struggle to, to, to read the Bible, and that's because there's unclean spirits that they've allowed to enter, and they've got hardened hearts. So not everyone that's broken in this life does turn to God, but when you do look at the Most High's people, when you look at God's people throughout history, most of them, most of them were, were crushed and they were broken. When we look at Adam and Eve right from the beginning, the moment Adam and Eve sinned, God chastised them. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Adam's punishment was to tall from the ground and from the sweat of his brow, he will earn his bread. And Eve's was to give birth in or labor in pain and to be subject unto Adam. Um, <clears throat> But they were humble, I think, after they sinned. I really do think that uh, Adam and Eve, because they are the mother and father of all living, the Bible says, turned back to God eventually. Um, when you look at Abel, what he went through, um, Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's sons. Adam's, uh, sorry, Abel's sacrifices were seen pleasing unto the Most High but uh, Cain's were not, and Cain became envious of his brother. Uh, he became jealous over his brother because he had favor in the most high's, most high's eyes, and he killed him. Look how Abel's life ended. Then you go to Noah. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says. He built an ark for over 120 years. His own life became nothing. His whole life revolved around the Most High. Um, he was told that there's going to come a pl flood upon the earth and to prepare the ark. The world and those around him, they mocked him, they scoffed at him, they thought he was probably crazy, senile and what have you, um, until the floods came. So he didn't have an easy life. He labored. He labored in his faith. His faith moved him to action. God broke him. God, uh, you know what it's like when, when you're growing up in school and you're not in the in crowd, or you are in the in crowd, or you used to be in the in crowd, but you've, all of us at one stage, 
of our lives have been uh, kind of maybe mocked at. Um, we know how that feels. Now imagine being mocked for 120 years. It's not an easy task. It's not every, everyone didn't receive Noah with, with favor and be like, hey, Noah, you're doing a great job. No, they mocked him. They laughed at him until the floods came down. He became a broken vessel. He became a servant of the Most High. He no longer lived for his own desires. He labored to build an ark. You go to Moses. Moses drew out the people out of the land of Egypt where the Israelites were kept in captivity by the, by the Egyptians. He had to perform miracles in front of Pharaoh. Pharaoh chased after them and God destroyed Pharaoh and his army. The Egyptians, they drowned in the Red Sea. Moses then went into the wilderness for 40 years. They were going to Canaan, the land of milk and honey, the promised land. For 40 years they walked in the wilderness. Can you imagine that some of the children were actually bo born in the wilderness as they were traveling through there? We think of the women today, we think of when they, on their monthly cycles, how hard that is, you know, you've, you've got your whatever. Back then they were out in the wilderness, they never had those things. Even the luxury of a flushing toilet with running water, there was none of that for them. So even though God took them out of the land of captivity, they, they went through toil in the wilderness. Some of them complained and murmured. The Bible even says, let us not complain and murmur as some of them did, because they were destroyed in the wilderness, because they complained. They said to Moses, you've taken us out of the captivity out of the land of Egypt and you brought us into the wilderness and we're even worse here in the wilderness than we were better off being captives in the land of Egypt and they murmured and those were destroyed God destroyed them Moses had to deal with their murmurings he had to deal with their uh, backslidings and eventually Moses himself didn't even enter the promised land so you see how God, because the flesh, <laughs> the flesh is against the spirit. The Bible says the flesh is at war with the spirit. Um, as long as we're in the flesh, the flesh is, is self. It's about self. It's selfish desires. It's about sin. It's about um, enjoying this life and the pleasures of this life which are only temporal things which are all at the end of the day gonna we're not gonna take anything with us the Bible says we came with nothing into the world and we'll take nothing out of the world <clears throat> but the flesh always propels you to sin there's as long as we're in this flesh until the day we die and we receive our new glorified bodies there's always gonna be a temptation for sin no matter how long we've been walking in the Most High, Satan will keep tempting. He'll keep throwing darts of temptation our way. And the only thing is, you know, we can do all things through Christ Jesus, the Bible says, that strengthens us. And that he'll never allow, allow us or suffer us to be attempted or to be tempted more than we are able. Okay? And with that temptation, he'll find a way for us to resist, and I'm paraphrasing that scripture. Um, he'll never allow us to be tempted more than we are able. So the, no matter the temptation that comes your way, there's always a way to resist it. Prayer. Get on your knees when that temptation comes your way. The point there is, God's people suffered immensely. <clears throat> you look at Samson. Samson was a, a mighty, mighty strong man of the Most High. He took the vow of a Nazarite where he grew his hair and because of his faith, not because he had long hair, but because of his faith and obedience to the Most High, the Most High equipped him with immense power. He was able to kill lions and he had immense power, but then Satan sowed a woman into his life. Her name was Delilah. 
and she was a, a spy basically for the Philistines and she wanted to know the quote-unquote secret of his power and she kept on using her sensuality and sexuality to sway him to give his secret away. Eventually he did because of her constant nagging, her constant perseverance of trying to uh, betray this man that she supposedly loved and that he loved her and um, eventually he gave his secret away he said the strength is in his hair she told the Philistines they came they cut his hair off and because of his disobedience to the Most High of, of revealing that to her um, God took away his power and the Philistines captured him. They tied him up, they poked out his eyes that he couldn't see anymore. He suffered. God chastised him. He broke him. That's what God did. And in that brokenness, Samson, Samson repented and he said, you know, just give me strength this one last time that I can pull these pillars down and take the, the Philistines with me. And the Most High answered him, and Samson died with those Philistines. He suffered. God chastised him. He didn't have an easy life. You look at the life of Elijah, the prophet Elijah. He was the last true prophet at that time, or during that time, him and Elisha who followed him. Um, the, the, you know, at that time, many of the prophets were given into a lying, deceiving spirit, and Jezebel was, was against the Most High's people. And Elijah was one of the true prophets that were left. And he didn't have it easy. He used to live out in the wilderness. God used to bring the birds to, to bring him food. Or use the birds to bring him food. Um, Jezebel wanted to kill him. Jezebel pursued him. And sent out her, her servants to, to find him and to kill him. She wanted his head. She wanted him dead. Um, he had to flee for his life. He didn't have it easy. All of the Most High's people had difficult goings in this life because the Bible says we are sojourners through this life. We, our kingdom is not of this world, Christ said. And he also said, store not up yourselves riches for you in this world where moth and dust and, and you know, where the thief comes in and breaks, and, and breaks in and steals, where the moth corrupts. In other words, everything in this world, the physical, the material things are fading away. When the Messiah came, they were expecting a worldly leader to set up a worldly government and make them physically strong, physically powerful in this world. But he said, my kingdom is not of this world. That's why he said, don't store up yourselves riches here. Store up yourselves riches in the kingdom of heaven. How do you do that? You do that spiritually. You enhance yourself spiritually, you pray to the Father, you overcome the world, you overcome temptation, you overcome the devil. The Bible says that, that the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And the works of the devil are envy, jealousy, lust, pride, vengeance, hatred, variance, lust, covetousness, uh, hatred. Uh, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. All these things are um, the, the fruits of the devil and the works of the devil. And Christ said, he, well, the Bible says that the Messiah, Yeshua, came to destroy the works of the devil. So, like I say, you look at all God's people throughout history, most of them, even King David, you look at King David, yes, he was king, but he suffered immensely. I mean, he had uh, King Saul, because David was the king of Judah at one stage, just the, king, the tribe of Judah, and the other tribes, King, you know, Saul was king of, and Saul pursued David, he hated David, he was jealous of David, then he would beg David's forgiveness, and the next thing he would turn and, and try and kill David again. So... He had to flee for his life many times, David. At one time, David had to spit on his beard and, pre and pretend he was crazy just to, to save his own life. 
and you read the Psalms, he said, you know, many of his friends have become his enemies. And when he loved them and he did them good, they paid him back evil for that good. Um, he had an affair. He fell into temptation with Bathsheba. God took his child. God broke David. That's why it's David that wrote a broken and a contrite heart. Will you not despise, O Lord? The Bible even says that God takes out our stony hearts and gives us a heart of flesh. He's a God that breaks you and molds you and shapes you. But in that, in that um, trials that you face, in those hardships, in those times of tribulation, you still rejoice. You understand, you still rejoice knowing that you've passed from death unto life and that the rewards that are awaiting you in the afterlife are much greater than any reward that can be offered to you in this life because these things are temporal and the joy that's awaiting cannot be uttered with words, cannot be expressed with words. The Bible even says, I have not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So God breaks his people in order to mold them. You look at the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was excelling above all of his peers in, in a Pharisee, in, in Pharisee, you know, he was becoming a Pharisee. At that stage, that was seen as a very prestige uh, position. Probably in the same aspect as you see many pastors or ministers today, or so-called deacons that they have today. Um, it was, it was a, a, a rich position. A lot of money was involved there. A lot of luxury and joy in this life. But God blinded him. God struck him off of his, off of his horse, blinded him. And, and God broke him. And after that, God used him to spread the gospel mightily among the nations. And Paul no longer became a servant of self. He no longer lived for himself thinking he was doing God glory, but he learned to truly be a servant, shipwrecked, beaten, thrown into prisons, scourged, mocked, laughed at, and eventually uh, beheaded, beheaded, died for the kingdom of the Most High's sake. Because as soon as you go from the kingdom of darkness, remember the Bible, so even though God created this world, even though the Most High created everything, the Bible even says, he, Behold, He made man, and He made animal, and He made all these things. And every time He made them, He said, and the Lord said it was good. The Most High said it was good. His creation is beautiful. His creation is good. But the, the Most High, His angel, the highest angel, Lucifer, Satan, became envious of the Most High, he began to get jealous and he began to crave the power the Most High has. And he was kicked out of the Kingdom of Heaven and the Bible says he is now the God of this world. That is why there is so much hatred in this world. That is why we face things like murder, hatred, theft, rape, molestation, uh, all kinds of filthy iniquity around the world. And people that have grown cold hearts, hard hearts that they don't even know who they are or even why they're doing those things because they've got such a drive for power, for covetousness and for selfishness. They're all about self and they've lost touch. They're so far from even who they are. They're so blinded by their sins, they don't even know. They don't have the time to sit and ponder why they're doing these things because they, Satan has his claws right into them. Like, puppet, like a puppet controlling them. They're no longer even able to resist those things. But that's why we find all these things in the world. Why we find all this iniquity and sin and filth. And you won't find it in the kingdom of heaven. It's because there's something wrong with this world. Why is there something wrong with this world? Because the Bible says Satan is the God of this world now. He's chased out of the kingdom of heaven and the broad road Christ said leads to destruction. 
and there be many that go there in that, but few there be that go in the narrow gate and find eternal life. Few. Few. So you must understand when you become a child of the Most High, you stand for something different and the world hates you because of that. It happened to all the Most High's people throughout history and it's still happening today because they rejoice in the opposite things than we do. It's almost like if you're an American and you go to Russia and you wave, you take an American flag and you shove it in everyone's face in Russia and you say everything that's wrong with Russia and how great America is, you're going to be hated there. And vice versa, if a Russian does that in America, he's going to be hated because he's not a, an American citizen and the American isn't a Russian citizen. And the Bible says we aren't, this is not our kingdom. We are sojourners passing through this world. In fact, Christ said, just as the Father sent him into the world, so he has sent us into the world. Imagine that. Imagine the fact that you're actually in this world because Christ commissioned you into this world. He sent you into the world to fulfill the will of his Father. Amen. And so we get hated in this world. And that's just how it is. Um, God loves to see, and it's because we have such... Our flesh has such a hard, stubborn, and rebellious heart. And in order to take that stony heart out, that rock hard heart that's full of self, that's full of foolishness, that's full of coldness, that's full of deceit, that's full of envy, that's full of jealous, jealousness. And, and enviousness and pride and all those things in order for God to change that heart he has to break that stony heart and take it out crush it and mold you and conform you into the image of his son the Bible says that we're being conformed into the image of God so God breaks your heart he makes it soft. You know, uh, Solomon said, with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more wisdom you gain spiritually, the more sorrowful you become, the more you begin to walk a life of repentance. And trust me, that continues up until the day you die. Because initially we repent of your main sins, but still, you you growing no matter how long you've been walking in the most high yes you're forgiven you're sanctified and justified in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of yeshua and he's reconciled you back to the father he's given you eternal life you've passed from death unto life the bible says and no man can snatch you out of his hands no one no one no one hallelujah no one can snatch you out of the father's hands how awesome is that but Satan will try. Satan will send people your way. He'll try and snatch you out of the Father's hands. He'll throw temptations in front of you to try and snatch you out. But we sin that abound, Paul said, grace did much more abound. What does that mean? Does that mean we can sin endlessly? No, it means that where sin abounds, grace is much more given in order to help you to overcome. That's grace. Every time you're able to overcome sin, that's the Father's grace that's pulling you through to overcome that temptation. The point is, God, God, if God dis will never despise a broken and a contrite heart, that means a stubborn and rebellious heart he does despise. So, yes, God breaks you. We can still, doesn't mean we have to always walk around with a, we can never smile, we can never have a joke, as long as it's clean. Or, or have a good times, or, or rejoice, or praise His name and sing and laugh and dance and glorify Him and sing praises unto Him. It doesn't mean we can't enjoy this life as long as we're not enjoying it in the way the world enjoys it. As long as we don't enjoy it in the sense of 
or the things that they do. Because the Bible says that friendship with the world is in an enmity with God. And whoever makes himself a friend of this world becomes an enemy of God. Doesn't mean you always walk around with a, with a frown and, and, a, and a, you know, that's how some, some people are, some so-called believers. And you never see the joy of Christ in their life. You only see sorrow. You see grief. And that true, that's true. Those things happen. But how long, how long are you going to grieve? There's also a time, the Bible even says, there's a time of love, a time of hatred. A time to sing, a time to dance, a time of, of, of love and a time of war, a time to love and a time to hate, whatever. There's a time for everything underneath the sun. And even though through that sorrow, we still have that inner joy. But God, no doubt about it, He rejoices in breaking you to be conformed into the image of his son. The Bible even says whoever doesn't get chastised by God has become a bastard, that he chastises every son he receives and every daughter. The Bible doesn't say every daughter, but it means everyone. Everyone that he receives, he chastises. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. And you, when, when God chastises you, Trust me, you're going to be broken. You are going to be broken. And that's why a lot of you have, you wonder why you have the sorrows. Because God's molding your heart. He's conforming you into the image of His Son. Because He loves you. And God only loves those in His Son. He cannot love any, He cannot, the Bible says that He, that's why He sent His Son into this world. You can't tell someone they're in the love of God when they're not in Christ. Because how can God send someone that he truly, truly loves away from his presence into eternal damnation? He can't. He loves those in his son because those are the ones he has forgiven. But the Bible says that he's called everyone to repentance. But understand why. This God that loves you, why he allows the sorrow in your life is because he doesn't despise a broken and a contrite heart. And because he's loving, he loves you and he's trying to teach you something. Because your kingdom is not of this world and this, this life is very quick. So don't take, don't, don't let it wear you down. Rejoice in that. Know that you are loved. If indeed your faith is true and indeed you walk in a repentant heart and you are seeking to do his will and not your own and you are praying daily to overcome self to overcome the temptations of the flesh and to do it his way and to seek his will in your life and to live for his glory if you're praying for that and you truly mean it and you're walking a life of true repentance and, and you are trying even though sometimes you fail know that his grace is stronger but as long as you're seeking that you are his it's god that's breaking you in order to be conformed into the image of his son and take joy in that and uh, don't let it wear you down rejoice in tribulation all right brothers and sisters i pray this video helps you and uh, keep keep strong in the faith keep in his word keep vigilant keep sober because your adversary the devil walks about as a roaring lion the bible says seeking whom he may destroy and satan if you're in the most high if you're any son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach, there is no doubt that Satan is seeking to destroy you. So be vigilant, take courage, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, the Most High bless you, and Shalom, take care.